Good morning, beautiful people of the world. <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago, if you're watching us from wherever, from your couch, from your from your desk at work, right? You're watching us. Welcome to Book Club Corner, where every Wednesday we chat with a publishing industry stakeholder. We chat with an author. We chat with book lovers, bibliophiles. Listen, welcome, welcome, welcome to Book Club Corner this amazing Wednesday. We have an amazing author with us today and her name is Kimberly James and she is the published author of Things We Don't Admit. She's a first-time author and she's pursuing an accounting degree and she's also the owner of Drink Up Bar Services. Welcome Kimberly. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's very happy to we are very happy to have you, you here with us today. And I love your business. <laughs> Drink up bar services. Right up our alley, Kimberly. I love it even more. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm putting Kimberly in this spot. Kimberly will be giving us some drink up our services at some point. Yes, we would. Before th yes, thank you. We would. Thank Cocktails you. galore. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, on Book Club Corner, we have a really relaxed sip and chat. And today we have coconut water again. I know all our wine drinkers out there like Listen, what's happening with Book Club Corner? I'm gonna Should sign you up. Something I would have brought the bottle. <sighs> Well, I said no, so next time <laughs> <laughs> we're having coconut water today. So cheers, Kimberly. Thank you very much. Cheers Pleasure to you. To be here. Thank you for being here. <laughs> and all of you in TV land, wherever you may be, YouTube, across the globe, Trinidad and Tobago, Dominica, Curacao, wherever you may be watching from, we thank you so much for being here with us and for sitting with us today as we chat with Kimberly James. And we just want to tell you, listen, today is united nations day of non-violence right and our book today is centering about around mental health yes it is so i thought it was so apropos did you know did you and in the un have a conversation about we might have had a little you know? discussion yeah <laughs> you know i'm going on book club corner could you organize yeah just yeah? make sure it sets on that same day so Thank we can organize you. this so non-violence today Yesterday was the day of older persons and later on this week we have Teacher's Day. So we're just letting you know, listen, try today. Let me put on my glass. Trinbago people, please, don't cost nobody any road. <laughs> Right? Be kind to each other. Nonviolence just does not mean not doing violent acts. It also means trying to be kind, right? Today is not the day to ill treat people nor do ad please. We want to, tomorrow to be peaceful in the news. For the news people to say, but not like nothing happened happen. in Trinidad and Tobago. What's going on? They listen please. to the real. Non yeah, they listen to Book Club Corner. They've been watching Book Club Corner, right? All our bibliophiles out there. Pick up a non-violent book and have a good read. Let's be kind to each other. Let's be good to each other. We have had enough violence, enough shooting and stabbing and grammar zone. Please stop it. Today, we just want some peace. Peace in the home. Peace in your job. Peace within yourself. Peace in your own mind. And we're going on a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to be chatting with Kimberly James about her book. Things we don't admit. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> we have plenty to talk about today. Don't go far. We'll be back in a few minutes. So welcome back. We're at Book Club Corner in the beautiful city of Scarborough, Tobago, right here in Tobago Updates, third floor of the Port Mall. And I'm giving you all of that information just in case you want to drop off some wine for us, right? <laughs> Just in case you have a book that you want us to talk about, you just come up and drop it and say, listen, I'm leaving this book for Jewel of Book Club Corner. Let her know I've left this for her, right? So feel free. Kimberly, mm -hmm. when I saw your book and I saw the cover of your book uh -huh. and I saw the mouth tape up, I say, mm, mm, mm. 
this is a sad, yeah. a very sad picture mm -hmm. of our mental health yes. these days. We but don't it is so true. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Tell us about the cover of this book. Things we don't admit. One, the title of the book. Tell me how that came up and this photo that you've used. How did that come to be the on the cover of his book? from personal trials. Because um, if we are honest with ourselves, they say the first step to recovery is admittance. Mm -hmm. And if we're honest with ourselves, we all are going through something or dealing with something or hiding from something, shielding, wearing a mask every day. Sometimes the best way through is to admit exactly what it is and filter it out. Figure out what's your next step, what's your best step. Sometimes it's not even your best step. Sometimes it's a step that you just necessarily have to take is not going to be easy, mm -hmm. but you have to take it. And that starts with admitting first that you actually have a problem, have an issue, or you need help. The bandages on the mouth is simply us not saying anything, us going to trials, not accepting help, not asking for it. And sometimes even if people notice it, we hide and we cover it and we don't. Mm -hmm. We don't want to face it. So we just bandage everything away. Mm -hmm. That's what that is for. Uh, how did you decide to use this photo? Where did this come from? Did you get an illustrator? I got an illustrator because mm -hmm. um, I did a self publishing So I used an app and got an illustrator. So I told them exactly what I wanted done. Told them I wanted an image of an African lady with her mouth bandaged on what it symbolized for me. And he did the perfect job. Yes, this is really, really good. And I noticed this is a younger person. Yes, because it starts there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you're wanting to address it from a very young that age is it. before it festers and reaches to a point where you feel as though it's a it's a norm or that you can i've been dealing with it for so long so yeah i might as well continue yeah we reach, you have too, to, we reach yeah, too far with the, with to the lion and you have to hit it, it when yes. you're in the early stages of it listen i i really love this topic it kind of goes back to the idea and the concept of saying something mm -hmm. right you know you know, when they, they fight in crime, they say, if you see something, say, say something. something. But start with yourself. Thank you. Right? <laughs> you don't like something? Seek start up. with yourself. Yeah. Who should we be admitting things to? Ourselves. Ourselves. That is it. It starts with us. Yeah. Because many times we accept stuff. We accept bad behavior. We accept abuse, whether it be mentally, physically, emotionally. Mm -hmm. We accept it. And telling ourselves that maybe if I just don't complain or don't say anything, it may get better. So how, how would you admit it to yourself? What does that look like? Is it me speaking to myself in the mirror, right? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Or is it me writing? What, is, My, what would you advocate? This book started off with every day I would put together a passage, basically of thoughts that were in my head or something I probably dealt with or something a friend is probably dealing with and every day I would jot down something and I would create a nice little photo of it on Canva and I would send it to my close friends and on days that I don't do it they would message asking well where is the mm -hmm. passage for today what's going on for today <laughs> yeah. and it became a staple whereas mm -hmm. every day they looked forward to it yeah. if they didn't get it they would message independently um Kim you could send a little prayer for me mm -hmm. this is what I remember you could send a little passage yes. if that resonates and that is how this came along it was just compiled notes in my phone mm -hmm. and i decided okay it's time to put this together because yes. you know it's, it's helping them maybe you could help other people as well mm -hmm. and that's how it came about but admitting it to yourself it doesn't have to be any special thing sometimes you're busy in the middle of your struggle itself in that moment identify that hey this is not normal this is not what it should be like i have to figure something else out i have to figure a different way through mm -hmm. let me try a different angle because you do the same thing over and over. You're accepting the same thing over and over. It's not going to change anything. Mm -hmm. But the sooner you admit to yourself, this needs to stop. Because knowing what you want is one thing. Mm -hmm. But knowing what you don't want is something else as well. And you have to know the both of them. I think we, we are very good at saying what we don't want. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't like he. I don't like mm -hmm. she. I don't like how they talk to me. I don't like smoking. I don't like drink. I don't like short clothes. I don't like long clothes. I don't like blue. I don't... The list is long. But what do you like? Exactly. You don't have a clue. Could you, if somebody was to say, okay, I am, I am waiting to mm -hmm. give you all the wonderful things in life. 
all the blessings, all the great things, all the achievements. What do you want? And you sit down there. The pause. I don't like, and I don't like, why you don't do this? I don't like that. And why I don't like that? And at no point in time what can you say what you like. Because you, like? you don't even know. No. We are programmed a lot to be that, negative. That, yes. And we don't really know the power of being positive. That positive statement. Hmm. So sometimes I say to myself, you know, sometimes something happened. I get a f something to eat. I didn't like it. And I say, oh, I didn't like that at all. I say, okay, what would I have preferred? <laughs> That is it. What would I have preferred to, to eat or to drink or to wear or to do or to be? And that's how I sometimes, instead of saying, I don't like this, I say, you're you know, positive. Yes, I would have preferred to do X, Y, and Z. I want this to mm -hmm. happen. And it puts me in a good mood because that now I have, have a goal. Yeah. yeah, now I have a goal. You know, well, if, if I want that, you know, if I'm feeling for porn, yeah, I know exactly Maybe I where to get it. Exactly. Don't try this lady because I didn't like it this time. I'll try <laughs> exactly. this lady next time. Exactly. Yeah. So I like that you're saying, you know, it, it doesn't have to be any specific format no. where you admit to yourself. But the, the weird thing about admitting is that we have to come to a space of self-realization mm -hmm. before we even admit. And sometimes you're hurrying around so much. We don't have the time to sit and really understand that this isn't the course of action we want to be taken. Also, because you know? you've been in it so long, you don't even identify that it is not supposed to be yes. like that. It's, there's an easier way. Yeah. There's a more acceptable way because you're so, is it, as I said, from young, mm -hmm. you're embedded that, okay, some struggles is just struggles. I saw my mom do it. Yes. My mom was like that. She, so you tell yourself that maybe because I saw my mom experience these things, she stayed, maybe I should. No. Yeah. You get so familiar in seeing other people experience it and things that you tell you yourself know. that you are supposed to experience it as well. No, it's yes. time to break generational curses and realize that, hey, it stops with me. Yeah. Going forward, it's going to be healing. Instead of carrying trauma, I am going to heal and I'm going to make sure and flow that over into other people. Mm -hmm. Oh, girl, I, I really like this conversation, you know, because I'm feeling to myself, you know, this is it, it is not this is not a surface level thing we have nope. to deal with. We're dealing with some things that are very much rooted, grown, mm -hmm. seasoned, marionated. Like born with it. That is it. <laughs> As you say, born. So there's an experiment. They were doing this experiment with adult rats. Mm -hmm. Every time they got to a certain point, they have them in a box, they open the box, and every time they tried to come out, they'd shock them after they got to a certain mm -hmm. point. They took these rats, put them aside, they went on to have, you know, offspring and all of that. And the offspring started to behave as Just if like they it. knew the exact they point. It. Yes, where they couldn't, they should stop. And they said, but, okay, but we did this experiment like, and last year exactly with these rats well. and why why is it that the rats the offspring of the rats who did not experience any of this why they the still be way. why they behaving like we did the experiment with them only to realize they did another the dna was carrying information Thank about you. it and you know sometimes you you come into this world a clear slate mm -hmm. you know never have experienced a problem never having you know experience hunger thirst um you know unhappiness and wondering how why am i feeling Even this way all of these things because it comes into yes. you from in the womb so simple traumas that your mother probably went through mm -hmm. you don't you mm -hmm. don't have a clue she never spoke about and, it, and but your, you feel it. And your father, yeah. because the DNA comes from half Both and half. Them, yeah. The DNA comes from half and half. So just remember that. What we're looking at is something um, that a lot of times you say, you know, why are you behaving? So a little child and you're getting on, like if you had the problems and the world. You know, some children are very happy, happy, and some children are always stressed out. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like people. Don't touch me. Where is she going? She not coming by us? Not understand where you know, this from. very fearful yeah. way about life. And you're wondering, they've been here before. What? What's going on? And that's the first epidemic. You was here before? Yeah, no, the DNA. Hmm. The, the trauma and the DNA. Carries and, on, yeah. And that's what I say. You have yeah. to make a conscious decision to decide that here, what this ends with me. I am not going to allow mm -hmm. certain emotional dramas, mental to affect Patterns. my kids i am not going to allow that and you know sometimes you don't even know it's happening but i have found that if you want to know if something is going on with you that you may not even consciously recognize mm -hmm. look start to look around at the patterns around you mm -hmm. Is everybody experiencing what I'm experiencing? Mm -hmm. Is that the norm? Is everybody dealing with what I'm dealing with? Is that the norm? Start to look for patterns. And once you start to look for patterns, now you could say, listen, okay, everybody life not hard. Mm -hmm. Everybody life not like this. What, 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 going on? Yeah. what is going on here what could with be done? me? Yeah. And once you start to have those questions, you know, be curious about the world you're living in. That's what we need to be. Because I think some of us take it, whatever comes, that's yeah, it. Yeah, we accept it. That's okay. Yeah. Well, I see Suzanne going through that. So Never maybe, question. Maybe it. it's normal. You are not Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> what is Very for nice. you is for you. What is for Suzanne is you for Suzanne. You are not Suzanne. Do not accept it because Suzanne accepted it. Your calling may be different. Mm -hmm. And it's only until you decide, okay, I am going to make a conscious decision to work on me. Because yeah. it starts with you as well. Yeah. You can't expect someone to come in to help you heal. It starts with you. And once again, it goes back to admitting mm -hmm. that I need to do something different. I need to make some changes. I need to stop doing something or I need to start doing something. I need to cut back on something or I need to do something a bit more. It all starts with you. And mm -hmm. until you're willing to do it, nothing is ever going to change. Willing to do the hard yeah. work. Huh? And so let me ask, have you been here before? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we always say that. Where did you... And this is not a question as if you shouldn't be wise. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But... I am hearing from you wisdom. I'm hearing from you um, some knowingness mm -hmm. that perhaps everybody doesn't experience. Yeah. Where does that for you come from? God. Mm -hmm. That's that's the best answer I can give. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I've had some experiences, but some of these stuff that I speak on, I've never experienced them. But in reading the passages, you would believe that I have because of how in depth I go into them. Mm -hmm. But I've never experienced them. Some of them is just probably speaking to a friend and she expressed something that she's dealing with. And I just start writing. I start it off with what she's dealing with. And the rest is just, it just comes out. Mm -hmm. It just flows out automatically. And yes. when I'm done and I read it over, I myself sometimes is like, Okay, then. Empathy. That's one hit. That's it. Empathy. Mm -hmm. We, If we could all... Have that. Give to ourselves first mm -hmm. that empathy. Because sometimes we have empathy for others and, and don't have it none for ourselves. For ourselves and know. that's why I tell people, give yourself grace. The same grace that you're willing to give to a stranger. I don't think you give it to yourself. Yeah. We are the hardest on ourselves than anybody else. Ourselves and the people who are closest, closest to, to us. us and who love us. We treat, sometimes treat them like trash. Because we'll go to work and we would smile with the cold, but like everything is fine, like nothing is going on. And then when you walk to the door at home, I'm not in the mood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I Lie was to younger. me like you're lying to the cold, <laughs> huh? I remember when I was younger, I had this conversation with my mother. She came home, she was tired, she was, yeah, she, she was a teacher. Mm -hmm. She had been with those students all day long and she's one of those who takes her job seriously. Yes. So she in it to win it, huh? She came home and I ready to prattle away and I mean this and that and she said, give, give me a minute, give me a minute. I said, okay. Yeah. I gave her a minute, I came back. Well, like she needed an hour. <laughs> <laughs> she still wasn't up to I was you know I, I, I was I was young I was a child she's still not up to my speed yeah. like come to man I ready to I'm talk ready. and chat what happened to you so I was like mommy you know when you at work I've seen you at work and you're always smiling yeah. and pleasant 
come home so. So yeah, come home like that. Yeah, I, we I leave want everything that. by the door and yeah. walk through the door like that. Yeah, yeah I, I want what you give yeah. them. I want the smiles you yeah. give them. I want the, the pleasant conversation and happiness you get. You yeah, see, be, be fake to be with me. Away. Be fake with me. Because clearly being fake is working. Be fake with me. Come on, man, smile like you're smiling with yeah. the coworkers and them. And when you go there, you can give them a bit of the attitude and yes. a bit of the goodness. Give me a bit of the attitude and a bit of the yeah. goodness. Make it a balance. We have to we have to work on that, you know, giving to our ourselves first mm -hmm. and the people closest to us, those who support us. Thank you. And that's why even in the book, it's, I you say it's, you have to, self-preservation is the name. You have to focus on yourself. It's not mm -hmm. being selfish. Yeah. When, you board, when you're on an airplane and they give out the instructions, they let you know, make sure and put on your mask. First, before yeah. you help anybody who's traveling with you because if you are not breathing how can you help somebody else mm -hmm. to breathe mm -hmm. so you have to nurture you so make sure that you are okay make yeah. sure that you can stand before you can help somebody else to do it mm -hmm. because you'll be pouring from an empty cup const constantly constantly until you're nothing and that's the point where the actual mental breakdowns and the actual just frustration sets in and there's a point of like you give up does it burn out mm -hmm. you are burnt out you have nothing more to give not to yourself not to anybody, anybody else around you and that's not what we want you know life is is a short we're here for a short time mm -hmm. sometimes it does feel long for some people mm -hmm. because it's hard but start with a practice that's what i say start with a routine of taking care of yourself yes your mental internal world Create that mental internal world first, every day, every morning, sometimes even before you go to sleep, mm -hmm. start from there because how you, how you fell asleep is how you're going to wake, wake up. up yeah. If you fell asleep in a bad mood, you're going to me, wake, wake up, up in, in a bad mood. mood. If you fell asleep hungry, well, God knows, you're going to be we'll stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> right you're gonna be eating everything in sight and and <laughs> biting rocks too because you know what they say about being hungry but whatever condition you put yourself to sleep in make sure it's a good mm -hmm. state of mind that's the time read something good listen to something good. yeah sometimes you fall asleep listening to certain stuff and don't realize how it affects your subconscious so you have to be careful what you listen to when listen. you fall asleep I love reggae. Uh, reggae lovers, please don't come for me. <laughs> don't come for me. But I'm just saying, I love reggae. But somebody reggae, life hard. Yeah. Life tough. Thank you. So your, friends, it, it is constantly, your friends not nice. It's constantly feeding that into your head while you're, while you're sleeping. Like Thank you very much. So you have to be careful of what you listen yeah. to when you're sleeping. You're well. never going to have no friends. <laughs> They're going to do you wrong. They're going to eat your last. They'll never help you. <laughs> Somebody's... Somebody. You like, give you that game the end times. Yes. <laughs> when you finish listening to it, you're like, you know. This was supposed to be positive. Yeah. Don't speak to me. You don't like me. You never treat me good. <laughs> you know, and I just, I'm just, we just using it as an example. Obviously, there are other genres of music that are equally negative. Yes. Right? But reggae and so kind of thing, that's we music. Uplifting, Come to right, yeah. right? Scan, that's we music. So I had, I had to start with us first. <laughs> so listen to something positive, perhaps some affirmations. Yes. Right? You, you can find a lot of them on YouTube and just have them playing, playing right? You yeah. Wake up saying something positive to yourself and you didn't even know because your subconsciously it was going into your brain and your mind and your spirit. And also speaking, speaking yeah. positivity into your day as well. Some people mm -hmm. get up and it's like, Oh gosh, why? I have to go to work today. There's some people who get up and wish that they had a job to go to. Oh, so instead gosh, of please, have to go to work, please let me go to work. Let me get up and go to work. Approach life like it's a privilege. Thank you. And when you do that, you would see that everything around you feeds into that. Yeah. When you the attitude of gratitude, when you're grateful for every single thing that passes, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, everything just comes towards you. Because yeah. it could be a simple upset. I look at everything that didn't go how I probably wanted it to as it went how it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. So like when we're having events and stuff, my prayer in the morning is, Papa God, let today run as it is supposed to run. Mm -hmm. Not how I want it to run. Mm -hmm. Not how the couple wants it to run, but as it is supposed to run. And I'm good with that. I'm done for the day. Mm -hmm. That's my only prayer. 
I know there are persons out there listening to us and I used to think this way. I, I still do because it's applicable, but I realize there's a little bit more to it. Mm -hmm. You're out there, you're listening to us and we're talking about, oh, good, bad and indifferent, be grateful. And you're saying, listen, a trigger warning is coming, right? So just let you know. I have been, you know, I've gone through X, Y, and Z. How could they say, mm -hmm. be grateful? I've been molested. I've been assaulted. I've been, how could they say, be grateful? We're not saying be grateful for the, for the things that are devastating you. What we're saying is that if you pull on a grateful thread, right? You, you may be going to, and I'm saying this because we're not trying to pacify. This is not, you know, little children speaking here. These are, we, we're big women. Mm -hmm. We're grown women. We actually have experiences. Pull on that grateful thread and you will see just like when, you know, you, you have one a piece of clothing and you I'm find that little, yeah. and you pull on it and just more, more and more come in more. You say like, wait, this whole thing won't unravel. Pull on that grateful thread. You would be surprised. surprised. I'm grateful for today. I'm grateful that I'm here. I'm grateful in that I moment. have a job. I'm grateful for even when you don't have a job. I'm grateful that because I don't have a job, I have time to spend with myself today. So I didn't have to jump up and rush mm -hmm. to go to work, right? Because I don't have a job. I, I want a job. I, I want to create, maybe you are an entrepreneur and you want to create your own job. I want all of these things, but while I am not having those things, I'm going to be grateful for the fact that not having those things affords me some time. So work on it. So work on getting to it, to better it, to exactly. create a better plan. Sometimes we don't realize that the delaying is for you to do it better. Put yeah. some work on it, put some work into yeah. it. And as you said, people are going to say, There's, what is there to be grateful for? I have yeah. five children. They, they go through to, what I go through. They don't know what I'm going through. You don't have a clue what anybody who's walking around you has gone through. But the lady who smiled at you this morning and waved, you don't know mm -hmm. what she went through last night. Or the, but yet, the taxi driver, the gentleman but taxi yet, driver dropped you. They are you. going along. They're not giving attitude. They're trying to be grateful. Yes. And in doing so, it brings it to you. If you're negative, it's going to be negativity. Yeah. The power of life and death lies in the town. So if you're speaking positivity into yourself, trust me. And you have to be intentional about it. You can't just say mm -hmm. it because somebody suggested that you say it. You have to be intentional. You have to believe what you're telling yourself, you have to see it mm -hmm. and understand this is what I want. Yeah. This is what I'm focusing on. I'm putting my energy into it, my mm -hmm. words into it, my thoughts into it. Because you can't want to be a carpenter and going on to ride bike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what going on? It's not clashing. Yeah. Thank you very much. So what you focus on is what is going to happen to yeah. you. If you focus on negativity, if you focus on what you don't have, what's going to happen? Listen, we're going on a quick break. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this out there. I, I have this habit, this practice I use mm -hmm. because sometimes I find I need to start from a place of truth mm -hmm. with myself before I could start to be grateful sometimes, right? So I might be having a bad day, things not going my way. I give myself 15 seconds to live in it, to get on like a warahun, mm -hmm. right? As <laughs> They used to stay a long time to be upset, to fret, to vent, to whatever. I said, listen, I gave myself 15 seconds. When that 15 seconds yeah. finish, that's it. I don't want to hear about this again mm -hmm. for the rest of the day. Okay, Joel? The rest of the day is going to be positive. You got it off your chest. Now let's Something refocus. Else. Yes. Right? But sometimes you just need to vent. You need to get certain things off your chest. That co-worker who come again to tell you all kind of foolishness again <laughs> and to piss you off again. <laughs> Nobody's not saying to be like an egg because as I say, sheeps are made to be shed. Yes. But there's a way to deal with it. Yeah. You see, as you say, you give yourself the time to just, hey, let me release. Let me let go of that rage. When I'm yeah. finished with this, it's done. 
I've left it in the past, I'm moving forward. If it happens again, I'm going to repeat the same action mm -hmm. because I'm not going to fall yes. to the negative. Simple as that. It's 15 seconds. I, I, I am giving it to you. And we're going on a 15 second break. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a little longer because we're chatting here and having some coconut water. But we're giving it the 15 seconds. And during the, that break, if you're having a not so great day, if you're having flashbacks, PTSD, things that have happened to you, you just can't get it off your brain. I tell you, take this break and just get it off your chest. Get some paper, vent, rage, whatever you need to do. And come back to Book Club Corner to continue chatting <laughs> with us today about the things that you don't admit. Get your snack, get a drink and come right back. We will see you in a few minutes. So I hope you had your time to vent. We hope you went to the bathroom and scream and, you know, tell them about their mummy and all kinds of horrible things. And then you came back to yourself, right? Nice and calm. You came back to yourself. You, you remembered the child of the universe that you are and the power that you hold. And we're back here speaking with Kimberly Dreams. <laughs> Kimberly, this conversation is so enlightening. I see when you wrote your book that you decided to focus on not just the positive, but focus on mending certain things. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Because there are two sides of um, admitting and focusing on yourself. You know, where do I want to go and my goals? But how did you come up with the idea mm -hmm. or the concept that, you know, mending needs to happen? Some fixing needs to happen and it needs to start with me. Um, I didn't want my kids to feel the brunt of whatever I probably had experienced. I didn't want that to bleed over into their lives. I didn't want it to affect them, whereas I was aggressive towards them or angry towards them or even just not giving them the full potential of the love that I could afford to give mm -hmm. them. Because sometimes, because I have friends who would tell you that if their mother or their father is to interact with them now or try to give them a hug, they don't know how to accept it because it's not something that they've gotten when they were younger. Mm. They're not accustomed to it. If they yeah. approach their parents, oh gosh, I'm busy right now. Don't, that kind of way. So I didn't want to be that for my kids. And in order to not be it, I had to realize that, hey, this is a trigger. This is something that I need to figure out how I'm going to deal with it, because it's not easy. I'm not going to say it as if, yeah, you can sit down today and then tomorrow you're all better or next week you're, no, it's time and it took years. And years of consistency, because you have to be consistent with it. You have to be diligent, purposeful with it. Mm -hmm. And be easy on yourself. You don't have to be fully healed or fully covered or don't have PTSD or trauma from a little trigger two weeks after deciding that, here, what I'm making a change. It's not going to be that easy. Mm -hmm. It's not overnight. Yeah. It is a process that continues and it's not even going to stop. You may reach to the point where you're at death's bed and some things are still going to be bothering yes. you. But you would have learned how to deal with it in a better way that it doesn't affect you as much as it did when it first happened. Mm -hmm. So the mending is you deciding that here what, bit by bit I'm going to chip away. Chip. If it used to affect me 100%, within a year, let it come down to at least 90 now. I like that. Within a year and a half, yeah. let, me, let me take it down a little bit more now. Yeah. I'm not saying that by tomorrow you're supposed to be walking. No. Time. Yeah. And be gentle be easy today you might be saying okay today's a good day and then tomorrow you might hear something or see something and you break down mm -hmm. go through it yeah cry as much as you need to cry Carol as much yeah. as you need to Carol whatever it is you need to do not, not as much starts, as you need to <laughs> some of us might need three hours <laughs> do it because here what right I tell yeah. people you see when tears are ready to come they come mm -hmm. and sometimes you're in a mood today and you tell yourself here what feeling a bit emotional and stuff and I'm mm -hmm. hold it and you hold it and then tomorrow when that hits mm -hmm. it's double the amount that it was because yes. you were bank up thank you yeah and it's real you were supposed to release that yesterday and you didn't release it because mm -hmm. I'm mature today 
I don't feel like crying today. I don't think <laughs> I think I could handle it today. No. Mm-hmm. There are times when you have to break. You have to just release it. Mm-hmm. I tell people crying is therapy. Really said. You wouldn't believe how True. good you feel after a good cry. Yeah. Especially when you're speaking to yourself during that moment. You're speaking mm-hmm. to your God during yeah. that moment. For me, when I'm done, I'm already. Mm-hmm. I know what I have to do now. Yes. I'm not going to be as affected the next time because I realized what it was. Mm-hmm. So maybe next time I wouldn't cry for two hours. It might be about a 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah it might be a little bit better. Any kind of change, the betterment is change. Yes. And it's good enough. Let's continue it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're chatting here <laughs> with first time author. Never been here before. <laughs> on book club corner or here in the world, right? <laughs> and we are talking about the things we don't admit. And I want us to, for a minute, Kimberly, talk about um, men. Now, we are not men. And we are not having a conversation as if we know what mm-hmm. men are dealing with. Mm-hmm. But when we talk about the things we don't admit and the pent up things, holding things, hiding feelings, we are seeing in society, Kimberly, that the men are being affected and, and we only seeing it because of what they're doing, doing, right? Because of what they're doing, because of what they're saying. We're hearing the anger, we're hearing the resentment, and we're hearing the bitterness. Mm -hmm. And it's coming from somewhere. Something is going on. From your experience, from maybe your friends, maybe your family, person you've dealt with, talk to us for a minute there. Have you found that the, this message that you're bringing is different when you have to package it for men or is it the same it's the same mm-hmm. it is the same we how all do they humans. receive it um some men are taught to man up you're not supposed to cry you're not supposed to show your true emotions you're not supposed to feel weak you're not supposed to talk about your problems you're not supposed supposed to deal with it on your own. You all have to admit that at some point in time, you need to speak to someone. You Mm -hmm. need to release to someone, not your boys. Because trust me, it don't make sense. They themselves are going through something and the same advice that they're giving themselves that is not working, they may give to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you may have some who might be able to tell you, hey, well, you need to seek help, but you're not going to listen to them because you're man, you're macho. Those that do seek the help, they see a change in themselves. They see better. And it's, it doesn't make you weak, you know, you're stronger for doing it. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, I have a, a son and I pray religiously for my son because I always say that the love that we see going around, um, men are not privy to the strong love that women are privy to. Because mm-hmm. if you look at old people's homes, you would come across more fathers more male in these homes mm-hmm. than you would females mm-hmm. because girls boys they would take mommy and they would see about mommy until mommy dies but daddy goes in a home you understand me that affects them and even before they reach the stage where they go in the home they're already seeing where they're going to go mm-hmm. because there are a lot of single moms so if there are a lot of single moms that means there are a lot of dads that didn't do and if you didn't do when you're at the age where you need someone to do for you who is going to do for you Kim, so men Kimberly, need a lot and, more. And, and I know a lot of I know a lot of people out there now singing who the cap fit that don't wear it <laughs> that, that word guys no so God. so men need to do the work as well do the work for yourself not just for yourself for your offsprings as well because that is something that you will never get back and it's your legacy, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. Right? And not just your legacy, but your mental health is all that you have. Let's be real. If if this goes where we have, we walk mm-hmm. in stark naked, to yeah. Scarborough. Yeah. We have. You don't have nothing else. Hmm. But it's harder for men to 
come to the conclusion and come to the realization of certain things because we mature. If certain things is you, you have a problem. We're not saying you are a problem, you, you know. Have, and that's you it. But sometimes when you say that, that's people, what they all hear. they hear is you and uh, problem. Uh, yes. They don't hear that you have one. They hear that you and are a, one. And a lot of persons grew up in, in households where they were treated like a problem. Yeah. You are not a problem. You have a problem. But the person who was dealing with you had a problem. Exactly. And therefore right? treated you as a you, you may one. have a, a that is have that would have it's temporary, hmm. right? It's not permanent. Ah, being that's permanent. And you are not a problem. You may have a problem, but you can get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think men I I am finding men are not approaching life like that. It's a temporary situation. Yeah. It sometimes it it feels like the conversation about an issue or a problem feels like if you are saying to them this is you're permanent, mm -hmm. this is permanent, and you're the problem, and this is permanent. Mm -hmm. They're not seeing the part we're saying here. Well, let's work on it. Yeah, let's talk about it. Let me know what's going on. Yeah, something bothering you, and I could. No, you're not I, good. I you're name, not good. I name man. I will deal with it. Yeah, no, you're not good. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not good. We can see something is bothering us. See something and is some wrong. And some men to take advantage know. of people who are willing to see that they're not good, ask a question, and try to give you the assistance. Mm -hmm. Don't. Don't walk away from it. Yeah. Because it's only so much time somebody's going to approach you trying to assist you. Mm -hmm. Don't walk away from it. As much as you feel you're macho, you'll be even more if you face it head on and come out on the other side. Stronger. Yeah. I love that. Listen, we have been chatting with Kimberly James about things we don't admit. You are not a problem. Whether you're, you're a man or you're a woman or whatever you, your gender described as, you are not a problem. You may feel like you have a problem. Something may be stopping you from living the best life that you want to live, but you aren't a problem. You aren't a permanent situation. There are so many ways that you can self-actualize the beautiful life that you want. And that's all we're seeing here today. We're going on a quick break. And when we come back, Kimberly is going to be reading to us from things that we don't admit. admit. And we're so happy to be having the opportunity to be read to. Because that's <laughs> one of the best parts of Book Club Corner. I love when we get read to. Listen, go get your snack because I, I know you're all little greedy people out there. All they eat all, all of the snack already, right? Drink out all of the juice. <laughs> so don't get with the empty pack. Go and get another snack if you have any. Go and get some juice if you drink out all the juice on your drink. Go and get some government juice, right? Free of charge from the pipe with a little ice. <laughs> okay, and come right back. We're going to be going into our read aloud session. Kimberly's going to be reading to us from her book, Things You Don't Admit. See you in a few minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to Book Club Corner, where every Wednesday we chat with an author, a book lover, a bibliophile about the literary arts, about their love of the written word. And today we have Kimberly James here with us, and she is going to be taking us into our read aloud segment, where she's going to be reading from her book, The Things We Don't Admit. Kimberly, I am I'm, I'm comfy. Take it away. <laughs> Uh, so the first one we'll be doing, the title is, Everything Will Be Fine. My most significant achievement in life is that I know who I am. I know where I'm going and have realized I love my identity. I mean, I've liked some choices I've had to make or things I've had to do. I've had to live through situations, but because of them, I have a more profound respect and love for myself, for the girl who was hurt, abused, mm -hmm. neglected, and made to feel less than underappreciated, mishandled, and scared. I've loved her into freedom from past trauma. I love her for healing and forgiving herself. I love her for accepting every aspect of her being that makes her the blessing that she is. I've listened to her fears and talked her through her horrors. I wiped her tears and listened to her vent for hours. Mm -hmm. I will continue to be her pillar and a constant reminder that she made it this far and can go so much further. I'll reassure her every opportunity I get to that she's more than enough. I'll be her biggest supporter and motivation. I will not allow her to fall for the lies those insecurities and doubts will try to plague her mind with instead. 
I will show her what she has accomplished and what she still has to do. I'll remind her of God's unwavering love and blessing on her life and keep trusting in him. Everything will be just fine. Mm. The other one is admittance. We've all been through some stuff that in some way or the other changed us for better or worse. And it's not until we sit and do some introspection that we realize that we downplayed how much these things affected, rubbed, or traumatized us. Because in that moment, we just wanted to be over with it, with the emotion attached to it, with the pain, with the trauma, with the regret. So instead of going through it mentally and identifying our wrongs and the wrongs of the person who caused us this pain, we shelve it. And in doing that, we are doomed to repeat our wrongs. The first step to recovery is admittance. And there's no healing until we admit that we are wounded and identify where the wound is and how to treat it. Mm. The other one I'll give you, the last one I'll give you is smile because you can. For the good of all and the harm of none, we would smile today. At every test, every trial, every disappointment, every obstacle, every upset, etc. Being upset is not going to change the outcome. Beating ourselves up is not going to reverse time. Crying and worrying will not make it disappear. But if we accept what we don't have control of many things that bring us discomfort, we would learn to gravitate to the things that bring us comfort. If we are always grateful, even in times and situations that break us, God will continue to give us things to be grateful for. The attitude of gratitude. We must not hold on to sadness and disappointment. Purposely release negativity and focus our energy on things that we have direct control over. So smile today at every opportunity you get to. Laugh heartily and enjoy the fact that you are able to. Mm. Listen, the only reason you shouldn't... <laughs> I don't want to say it, but the only reason you really have no, no reason to smile is if all your teeth gone. <laughs> Okay, that's about it. If you, if you have two or three in there, listen, do let it rip. Yeah, let it rip. Who vex loss? Smile. I love that. Smile. <laughs> Just let it out. And you know, sometimes we we want to smile, or we we want to be vexed. Still. And sometimes the slightest little, the spread. Yeah. As you give a little, it just. We want to be vexed still, but somebody tell you a good joke, and you want that to laugh to nobody. In your mood. Let it go. Let it go and smile. Oh, I love the first one. Everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. I really love that one. <laughs> Everything. Listen, get this book. The things <laughs> we don't admit. Kimberly, where do they get this book? It's available on Amazon and I also have copies at ITT Post to anyone that wants to purchase. Anywhere in the world, please, she'll send it to you. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to be taking these gems that you've mm -hmm. given us. I'm going to be taking them with me for the rest of the year. Hopefully into next day. I'm getting one of these books. Mm -hmm. Listen, we are heading into the green room where we will be looking at insights for authors and publishers. And today we have an amazing question, obviously. And we'll be looking at what or who are the big five? What or who are the big five? They are the five largest traditional publishing houses left. And they are Penguin, Random House, HarperCollins, Hatchet, Simon & Schuster, and Macmillan. Each has dozens of imprints and they may soon be the big four. So just setting, you know, for those authors out there who are looking to become traditionally published, you're looking for somebody to pay you to publish your work. You may be looking for the big five. There are the smaller imprints and you can check them out whether you need an agent, send out your query letters and all of that. So that's it for the green room today. Tell us about... Oh, I almost forgot. How could I forget my Mansa? Mansa Bookstores right here in Calder Hall. Sponsoring us, always supporting us. Please, Mansa Bookstore has a variety of things for you. They carry local authors. So check them out Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And you can spend $500 there and you'll get back $150 off with this amazing voucher program that they have at Mansa. So thank you so much, Mansa, my good friend Tamika, 
And also, if you are an author or you know an author, please tell them about our author directory. The Caribbean Book Marketing Hub has an author directory that we are going with. And if you want to be seen, if you're looking for visibility, get your name and your books in this author directory. You just have to fill out a form with your information and the directory will be coming out soon with all of your information so that you can gain some extra visibility. So thank you very much for that. Kimberly, tell us how you became published. I self-published. Why did you decide to go that route? Or was it a decision? Did you feel no, that was I, anything you had I to do? I was speaking to a publisher um, out of Barbados. Um, Cost-wise, it was, it was feasible, but I believe that I could do it by, by myself. Mm -hmm. That was just it. I yeah. told her, hey, well, I think I want to do it for myself. Editing-wise, um, the way that we speak, they speak differently. I didn't want to lose what I wanted to say and exactly right. how I wanted to say it. Yeah. So I wanted to edit it myself so that exactly what I want to say is what is conveyed because mm -hmm. sometimes in editing they may change words or they may change how they place it I didn't want that mm -hmm. so I edited myself and I published through Amazon which was pretty simple you don't have to pay anything mm -hmm. they actually just take a commission off of every sale that comes in after you have published the book and it was pretty straightforward they would send you a template and you would put everything into the template mm -hmm. and you just submit it any changes that has to be made they alert you you make your changes and it's done so tell me, did you have your ISBN number when you went to Amazon? To yeah, publish? you have to have it. So you have to um, you have to email Nalis and they will go through the entire process with you. You pay for your number, they give you your number and then you supply that to Amazon and they put that on your book for you. Okay, I, I only ask because Amazon does give a number. Yeah, they do. So they have their own ISBN mm -hmm. number. It's called an ASN number. Yeah. But there's some limitations with that. So just going to throw out there to authors. If you don't get your own ISBN number and you go to Amazon to publish, they will give you an ASN number, but you will not be able to take your book nope. anywhere else other than Amazon. Yep. Just letting you know for all those out there, Amazon if you go to them, you can come with your own ISBN number and we advise that. But if you use um, Amazon to give you an ISBN number, which they call an ASN number, your book will only be able to be put up on Amazon.com. Amazon Just letting you know. So that's an important distinction. Kimberly, before we get into my wrap up, mm -hmm. I have one question for you. I noticed at the back of your book, well, two questions. In the back of your book, you have your about the mm -hmm. author as well as on the hardcover yeah. itself. And well, three now, you, you have a hardcover. Mm -hmm. Why did you do that versus a soft cover? I have soft covers as well. Okay, then. <laughs> Listen, people, she have variety. And you have in the back here about the author as well as on the book. Yeah. Why did you decide to do the both spaces? Um, just to take up because... Um... The soft cover version, um, I did it on the back here alone and not on the inside. Mm -hmm. And on the hard cover, I did it, oh, I did it on, the, on the gold pieces. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. And there's one more question I had for you. Where my table of contents, Kimberly? I don't know this, one. I know. this is how I read my book. I, when I get up, you just. You're cutting the book. You're, cu you're cutting the book. You're cutting the book. <laughs> And trust it. me, because every one of it yes. resonates in some way with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, there's a girl, she bought one and she told me every morning she would get up and she would just skip through and she yes. would read through and she would highlight what hits of the day. Yeah. And that's how she reads the book. And she said every single day she gets something that pushes her through. It yeah. just hits. You, so, so you didn't want them to just be going to the, no. from the table. Like, okay, no. I'll read this today. No. You wanted them to you just open. And yes. the headers, because the headers, they identify certain things. Mm -hmm. If the header calls out to you, then you go right ahead and you read. I like that. You know, there are so many different ways you can yeah. format your book. And I like that you... These were decisions yeah, yeah, that, that I you consciously made. made yeah. it, it didn't just happen no. to you. And, you know, so when I asked uh, Kimberly, when my table, I come then she said, I didn't put none. <laughs> right? 
that's my business. <laughs> I didn't put yeah, that in the book. You just open. And that's how I did my book. And when you pop open, you see boundaries. Very good. Boundaries. Click, click with you today. Yes. Okay, I'm going to read about setting some boundaries today. Very good. And you Listen, go. you heard it here first, right? Kimberly James talking about her book, The Insights and Outs of the Things We Don't Admit. Mental Health Day is coming up next week, Thursday. Mental Health Month is coming up in November for men just to focus on men we know what's happening out there in the world and we want to just reiterate to you take time to fill your cup before you look to pour mm -hmm. into others that is the message i'm getting yeah. from it and this book will help you to pour into yourself, yourself first before you look to pour into others so before we go we want to just alert you next week wednesday we have another amazing author, and that is going to be Miss Alicia Parejo. And she's coming to talk to us about her two books. And listen, you don't want to miss a beat on Book Club Corner. So if you didn't get to see it live here today from the Tobago Updates Facebook page or Instagram or wherever you may be looking for, go to our YouTube channel, Book Club Corner, and you will see not just the conversation I'm having here or had here with Kimberly, but all the authors we've interviewed. And you can just look at them and figure out what's happening, what you want to do. There's such good nuggets in there for you as an author and even for publishers. So I want to thank you for being here with us today on Book Club Corner. Thank, thank you, you for, for having me. Thank you for being here with us. Cheers to <laughs> you, Kimberly. You and next time I'm chasing, we're going to be chasing with something Wine. different, huh? <laughs> Kimberly has promised. Yes, I have. <laughs> we want to thank you for being here with us. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. It's the United Nations Non-Violence Day. Please, peace within yourself. Peace with your rest of humanity. Peace with your family and your loved ones. And let's have a great day. Thank you for being here and see you next week, Wednesday.